Hello Year 9s and welcome back to Mathematics. In this video I'm going to go through solving problems using trigonometry. So by the end of this lesson you should be able to apply trigonometry to help solve a few different problems um, and you should be able to visualize problems that involve trigonometry and apply trig to find missing sides and angles. So that's what we want to be able to do in this lesson. Now a quick recap about what we've done over the last couple of lessons. Over the last couple of lessons we've been applying these four steps here to help us find missing sides and missing angles in right angle triangles using trigonometry. So here, what we had to do was these four steps. The first step was we labeled and identified our trig ratio. So we labeled the three sides of our right angle triangle. And then after we've done that, we identify what trig ratio we're going to use. Are we going to be using sine, cos, or tan? Then after we did that in step two, we wrote a trig equation. We wrote uh, sine theta is equal to, or sine an angle is equal to a particular value, or cos and, um, is equal to some value. And so we wrote a trig equation based on the information that we got in the question from the previous part. Then in step three, we rearranged the equation for what we were trying to solve for. So on the left hand arrow, I have when we were solving for missing sides, we used trigonometry. So when we're solving for a missing side, we would use trigonometry. So we would use sine, cos, and tan. But what we did last lesson was if we're finding a missing angle, we use a special thing called inverse trigonometry. And so inverse trigonometry, we put in the ratio and we get out the original angle we started off with. So that's what the two types of trig that we were dealing with. So if we're trying to find a missing side, we use normal trig, so sine, cos, tan. But if we're trying to find a missing angle, we use inverse trig. So inverse sine, inverse cos, and inverse tan. So that's step three. And in step four, all we do was we solve it by putting it into our calculator to get a value for what we were solving for. What we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to be going through, applying those steps that we've been w working with to solve trig problems where we don't necessarily have a diagram in front of us or we don't have all the information there. So what we're going to actually use is something that we've dealt with earlier this year and also throughout all of last year as well, hopefully for you guys. So what we're going to be using is Newman's analysis. Now, last term we had a look at Newman's analysis a bit. Let me just recap what we do when we're solving uh, using Newman's analysis. Newman's analysis is a way that we can solve math problems when we don't have uh, worded math problems and just problems in mathematics. And it's a systematic way of approaching a problem in math. So if you remember, when we did Newman's analysis, there was five steps that we did. So the first step was we read the question and then we underlined the keywords. So by reading the question, we want to make sure that we understand what information we have in the, que in the question. And we underlined the keywords to also highlight that for us so we can see where it is. Now I have an additional step here, and this is particularly when we're solving for um, solving, doing problems with trigonometry. I recommend that we draw a diagram if possible. Sometimes when you're dealing with a worded problem, you don't always have a diagram there in front of you for you to see. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. And so if you don't, draw a label diagram showing that information from your question so you can visualize and see what's happening in your question. The okay, second step in Newman's analysis is to ask yourself, what is a question asking you to do? Are you trying to find an angle? Are you trying to find a side? Are you trying to find a height? Are you trying to what are you trying to find in the question? Make sure you're very clear in your mind what you are trying to find and that you end that you your goal is to find that thing and not some other quantity in your question. Okay, that's step two. Step three is you need to figure out what operations and formulas are you, you're going to use. So as I said before, if we're finding if we're trying to find a missing side, are we going to use trig or inverse trig? Well of course you're going to use regular trig. If you're trying to find an angle, however, we're going to be using inverse trig. So make sure you know what you are going to be using to solve this problem. Then the fourth step is to solve the problem. So put it into the calculator, do all those steps. And the fifth and final step is to check your answer. If it looks wrong, it probably is wrong. So have a look at the answer that you got and have a look. Think about what that would look like in real life. Is that a realistic answer that you've gotten? So that's what we're going to be applying in today's lesson.